done. It's cute now. We worked on it. Hello, hello, hello. <clears throat> hello. Okay, uh, we're about to open the uh, 11th meeting. Would you believe 11 meetings of the Charter Commission? Uh, here it is, Tuesday, April 5th, just a few seconds after 7 o'clock, and we're now in session. Uh, the agenda is available to everyone, and I think you've seen it before. Uh, and so we'll start a, a little differently. We've always put community input up close to the front, but this, uh, this evening is absolutely first because there are going to be two opportunities for uh, So if you want to just move your chair over a little bit, just, Jim, that would be good. Move. Yeah, oh, well, whatever works. And I'm inviting people, and I'm sorry I didn't look at your name on the list. But oh, would, Linda, me? Yeah, go ahead. Oh. Oh, You're you up. Want me to go first? No, no, no. Uh, no, no, he's part of us. Okay. <laughs> he's part, he's oh, part of us. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, we, we shouldn't wear name tags. Oh, uh, but he's well, I can see your yeah, names. Well, but I'll now. show you, he's part of us. Oh, he is, okay. <clears throat> All right. Um, so I came here tonight with my husband, Dave. My name's Linda Mead, and I just want to thank everybody for let me go first and be the first speaker here, I guess. And, um, you know, I go on social. Linda, would you just give us your address so you're in? Oh, yes, sure. It's on here, too, but 5 Maitland Street. Okay. Oh, I know where that is. Oh, yeah. It's a nice house. Yeah. Nice little place. <laughs> um, we moved here in 2017. Okay. But we've been in New Hampshire all our married life. Long time. Um, but anyways, um, I know there was an article put out by the Monitor where, and this was in, um, it's published uh, December 3rd, 2021. And it was about the chart, it, the headline was Concord Charter Commission considers changes to, to school board structure. And I would just like to say, I think a lot of people in Concord would like to see that change. Um, I think the taxpayers deserve to vote on especially, um, you know, large budget, you know, proposals that are out there. Um, you know, our taxes are pretty high in town. And I, every other town, as far as I know, I just learned this, has a different system, right? Everyone, except Concord. We're like, why do we do it this way? And people are asking, why the school budget is not part of the wider budget. Why can't we vote on certain, especially, you know, very large expenditures of money, and why is the school board in charge of that? Right? And nobody, and honest, it's an, right? I mean, I'm just wondering. <laughs> I, I've never had a system like this. You know, we lived in Bow before this. And people would come out for those meetings like crazy. I don't believe that people aren't going to show up to, to like a March meeting, especially if it's advertised, i.e. comes out maybe with your tax bill. <laughs> you know, here's the next public meetings. Boom, everybody's going to show up, right? I mean, I just think that people should be represented by their, by their vote. I mean, you know, it's like taxation without representation, almost, when you have a group that decides the, bu the school budget and, and these large expenditures like new buildings and whatever else. I just, I just believe that I hope you would consider, you know, I read the article, it was a nice article, kind of gave me ideas of who's on the commissions and everything, and I would just like you to at least consider that change. Okay, but that's it. That's all I wanted to say, and thank you for letting me speak. Oh, you're very appreciate welcome. it. Thank, thank you for coming. Point. Yeah, really thank you very much. It's my first. Okay. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, do you want any kind of a quick response to that? Um, uh, I don't. Sure. Yeah, if you'd like, that's okay. Well, I'll take a whack at it. Okay. Um, sure. The school district has a charter of its own. And the city council has a charter of its yes, own. And yes, we are different from others. And no, we haven't heard a lot about it. We started talking about this in November right after the election. Yes. And uh, Charlie, the gentleman in the red sweater, 
has he has attended almost as many meetings as we have, and we've not had one person until you came who who questioned that. I, well, you know, everybody yeah. has their questions to offer, yeah. and so uh, we have been at this for a whole long time, and uh, uh, I suppose we expected people to show up, but that didn't happen, and so uh, it's a little late now to change some of those things. And as far as uh, uh, coalescing uh, certain uh, budgets, uh, the school district budget is the school district budget, and it reflects all the things that go on within the school. We have no, uh, we're not in a form that has a uh, town meeting. We're not a town. Uh, we're a school district. And uh, the city council doesn't have a town meeting either. So the forms of government are, are quite different. And although it may be different for you, it's you come from one reality and we live in another one. I don't know if that helps at all. Well, uh, it, but, it does. Yeah. I, I understand what you're saying in your perspective, but I mean, you look at other very large cities in the state, Manchester, Nashua, how do they do it? How do they, how do they? Some of them would like to do it the way we do it. Well, they probably do. But they, they, don't do it by, they don't do it by a town-wide meeting. They yeah. do it through, well, Kate, you, you should come well, on. I Kate mean, used to be on the school board in well, Manchester. The so. man, mayor and board of aldermen, the, the, board make, the school board makes a recommendation to the board of the aldermen in, um, in Manchester, but they ultimately approve the budget. It doesn't, Pull your microphone closer. Yeah. There isn't a town meeting where it goes back to the voters directly. It's, it's a representative. Yeah form of government, even though the school district doesn't have the direct. Yeah. So it's who makes the actual final decision? The mayor and the board of aldermen. No. The who? Which is the, well, the, equi of the, the equivalent council. of the city council. Yeah, they, council. in yeah. Manchester it's called the it's called board of aldermen. Board but, board of aldermen. Yeah. And, and ultimately the voters, because those people on the board of aldermen right, and the mayor, they're elected and, and, and in Concord, the, the school board members are elected uh, for three-year terms, and there's nine of them. So every year, there's an election, and that is really where the voters' interests are expressed and represented when people run, and they will run on various platforms and, and issues. So I think it, it, this is just a representative city, municipal type of structure is different than, for example, in Bow which is a yes. town meeting, yeah. annual meeting system. Thank you. You're getting a, go ahead, Tom. So the other thing that, I'm Tom Croto, and thank you thank for coming. You. Thank you. The other thing that, that comes into my mind is that all along the way of the budget building process, in the months that the, the board puts that budget together, all of those meetings are open to the public they, are, they encourage folks to come to those meetings, and then they have two public hearings in various parts of the city for uh, public input as well. Um, some of those, you know, mo many of those um, are well attended and some are not, depending on the year and, and sort of things. But the process is very open along the way, and so things that you know, a contention of folks in the city would have big problems with, could be coming, you know, could have people come and address. Yeah, I guess my concern is, though, that I think the makeup of these board, the boards, school board, okay, I just think that we need a mix of folks, you know. I, it's just my opinion. Um, because I don't think people come to these meetings because they can express their opinions, but they know it's futile. What's the point of coming to a meeting if you say your piece like, hey, I don't think that school should be built, it's too big, and do we really need it? Look at the numbers, look at, you know, go through and look at the expenditures. So why would people show up? That's why you don't get anybody. I, I'm, I'm looking at me as a person, right? I spent, I'm very busy, very busy, but I come because I'm trying to voice an opinion for others that are speaking out there and angry. They don't like sort, certain things. 
you guys aren't going to hear it because they're not going to show up. Mm, if well. they don't, if nothing changes, they can say all they want, get patted on the head, yeah, thank you for coming, and then they walk out the door and they don't have a vote. There's nothing going to change what in some mean? ways until they get elect, you know, the elections come up, try to get, you know, new people in. Mm -hmm. I think what the mix the of these bo the boards has <coughs> to change. I'm let just me, saying, and I don't on. know what that should be, but I think, you, you know, the way representation. It I'm sorry, I don't mean to interrupt. Oh, go you. ahead. Sorry. No. No. Um, so I was on the school board for 11 years, in the 1980s for a period of time, and then in the 2000s for a period of time. And in the 1980s, when you had the school board budget meetings, a lot of people came. That completely stopped in the 2000s. The only way that school board members know what the public is thinking is if you either call them, write them, or come to meetings. And the only way the board changes is if people are willing to run. Hmm. People are, you know, um, it's, um, I've often heard people say, well, you don't listen to us. The fact that we don't adopt someone's position yeah. Yeah. doesn't mean we don't listen. <laughs> um, so I think it's just like any other group, if enough people come out and express a view that is contrary to what the board might <coughs> think in the beginning, then they might well change their view. And I'll give you a perfect example of that in your testimony tonight, which we really appreciate. It isn't that you're too late. It's that no one came out to it. This is the one issue, by the way, we thought there would be a lot of hot button issues around because Concord is truly unique in this, in this respect in that the school board sets the school budget and the city sets the city budget. That's an unusual situation. Mm -hmm. um, and serving on the board, I've always thought the advantage of that, I mean, don't serve on the board anymore, um, but the advantage of that is you don't end up in a situation in which you're trying to make a decision as to what's more valuable, another teacher or a new fire truck. Um, and splitting those two things off, I think, is a real advantage. It also gives the citizens of Concord direct, um, I'm searching for the right word, I can't find it. Um, if you don't like what the school board's doing, vote them out of office. Um, and there's, you know, it's a, it's every, every year, every year there's a popular vote for the people who should be on that board. And this will sound harsh, I don't mean it to. Um, and it's not directed you at, at you at all. The only way to change things within a democracy is to go vote. Um, and I really appreciate you coming and expressing the view tonight mm -hmm. because yeah, it takes courage. We, we really mm -hmm. haven't had a chance to address it at all because mm -hmm. no one's come and said, change this system. So you've... you've um, okay. So if I was to pursue this further and I got people, would I have to do a petition, get signatures, addresses, signatures, and bring it forward? <laughs> Because people can't always make these meetings, and they, they can't even find out what the agenda is. Listen, I'm not, I don't think I'm not tech savvy, but I've been going online and pulling up stuff, and sometimes it's hard to understand what the real agenda is. And I pull it up on school board, and I pull it up on this, and I read through. I just think people get try to find information and there's different sites and different things and you look and I would love to see if people are interested in doing this. I don't know how many signatures I could get, but I would be willing to try to pursue it if there's it's not a numbers game in terms of the number of signatures people yeah. I mean, no Okay, so no they gotta numbers. physically come. No, no magic number when or, it comes to people. Or, yeah, or in voting and I'm sure yeah. it's different based on the turnout. Right, right. Okay. Okay, does that help? Uh, well, <laughs> we're not gonna, we're I don't think we're going to convince so. you. <laughs> well, no, it doesn't change a thing in, in terms of what I said. Okay. You know, I mean, I'm not hearing, um, not, I guess I could find the word for it, but 
I don't see a change happening. Let's put it that way. It kind of sounds futile in my book. I mean, yeah, we can wait till elections, but it seems, you know, I mean, I'm, that's fine, but I'm not, I think the mix has to change on some of these boards. I think maybe there needs to be some citizens, maybe. Sort of like you put on a, you know, a board. I guess that, uh, <laughs> if you don't mind me just interrupting for a second, could, could you, I would be interested to know what you mean by that. Um, you know, what, just, I, I don't mean to put you on the spot, but what you're looking for, wh what do you mean when you say you would like a different mix? Are you looking um, for... Well, let's put it this way. People that I... Oh, sorry. I think he can. Oh, sure, oh, sure. sure. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I'll try. <laughs> all right. We don't um, usually have are you debates sure you from came the... Yeah. <laughs> I thought I was all down at the desk. Right, I don't mean to put you at the yeah, spot, but it's okay. it would be helpful if for us to understand what you're thinking when you say, you know, that you'd like a different mix. Um, well... Okay, this is what I hear when I when people bring it up okay. in social media. So it's not just me. Yep. I'm taking I listen to what people are telling me and why they say it's not even worth trying. Okay. And what is it that they say that causes you to believe that? Well, some of them have been on these boards before. Have been and, on the school board. Um I believe so, yes. I think one one gentleman. Okay. And he said it's not worth it. You'll try, you'll go, you'll state your, your position, you'll ask for change, like I just did, and they'll, whether it's school board or this, or maybe some other board, they'll pat you on the head, they'll thank you for your time. <laughs> Good girl, you'll leave, nothing changes. They don't wanna hear it. Maybe because I eat, people say there's a clicky, clicks like school board I mean let's face it if you look at the well I don't know all the people on the school board yet but that's what that's what the people that live in this town or have lived in this town for years are saying it's not me I've only been here since 2000 actually lived in the house that I'm in since 2017 so I'm just trying to say that people are extremely frustrated by number one like school board, for instance, right? You look, you go online, you look for information. It's, you get bits and pieces, but nothing real clear, even though they state what maybe you know, it's gonna be about. Um, I think if there was a way to um, convey when the next meetings are coming up, especially big, important meetings, maybe go out with that. I said last night, go out with the tax bill, you know, right there. These are the next upcoming meetings. Everybody gets a tax bill in town. You know, how are you gonna miss it? You know, open it up, oh geez. You know, I mean, a better way to communicate. And I just don't see things, you know, I see a lot of frustration and anger because taxes are going up, right? I just read somewhere in the newspaper 4.4%. And, and I look at the school, the kids, are they, are we really educating these kids? I'm seeing like Concord High, you know, what are we getting for the money? I look at the Concord High, math, science, you know, what their, <laughs> their grades are. And a lot of these, there's a lot of not so good outcomes. So what are we getting for that money that we're putting into these schools? And people are very frustrated. And they're very angry and I don't know if you guys look at but that's what I hear and I'm not I'm just new I'm trying to learn you know I think to the meetings I think you're very articulate and you should strongly consider running for the board and and I think <laughs> and I think that what you'll find is is that there's a lot of people who live in Concord who feel like you do and then there's a lot of people who who don't oh, yeah. and and yeah. and I think when we all when this Charter Commission had people running for it we had you know a group and we went to the to a big debate kind of our session where the Concord monitor interviewed everyone mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and not one person on the entire stage on the issue of uh, 
you know, the independence of yeah. the school district said. So every person running in this particular case, yeah. but I think with someone as articulate as you are, you should be encouraged mm -hmm. to uh, express your view and run uh, for the office. It may not happen. I once had great advice given to me who said, you know, you can get anything you want done in this town. And the gentleman was referring to DC, if you take a little bit longer time horizon. Okay. And I think sometimes it doesn't happen in one mm -hmm. meeting, mm -hmm. but your voice can have an effect, mm -hmm. uh, especially as a, someone who runs, runs for office and communicates to your neighbors. So mm -hmm. I, I wanna thank you for coming out tonight, mm -hmm. making yourself heard. You shouldn't feel um, uh, upset or, no. or, or not invited. I want you to say, to know and I'm sure I'm not the only one here who says you're very articulate and you should consider running. And so at the risk of being <laughs> accused of patting you on the head and dismissing you, no. <laughs> which I am not doing, uh, but we do have a two hour limit yes, to our meeting tonight and we have a, a, a good sized agenda with uh, people who have shown up to deal with it. Yep. However, Appreciate I think that, that we would all echo uh, Bill's words that uh, you know, new, newcomers can get well informed and make a difference, and uh, we all encourage you to do so. Oh, well, I say one other thing. Appreciate all of us have phone numbers. We're all in the. It's all online. Yeah, yeah. Um, you can. I don't drink you know. coffee, but I'd have coffee with you. You would? <laughs> yeah, sure. All right. I like that. I like going up. And, and no one has put things. more into this school system, and there's people here who have come close than Miss Hoadley. Oh, I'm that, sure. So I'd love to have a conversation with her. Everything. <laughs> You'll teach me a lot. Okay. Sincerely, <laughs> thank, thank, you, thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank uh, you. Do we have other community input? Mr. Russell, please. It, it wouldn't be a meeting without Charlie. <laughs> oh, God bless you. Charles Russell of... Uh, Concord. I've, uh, I think your name is over there. I've written it down, yeah. yeah. My, I've missed a, a, f a few meetings, but I've uh, managed to stay awake and watch some of the ones that I didn't attend. <laughs> Charlie, uh, you need I to get a life. <laughs> did take, well, they do show them at 2 in the morning, so when you can't sleep, that <laughs> helps you out. That'll put you to sleep. <laughs> yeah, well, um, I want to thank Ms. Mead for uh, speaking. Um, what some other, just to address that quick point, um, what some school districts do is they have a citizen budget committee. And so you get some pushback from, you know, hey, we, you know, we really don't need that third assistant superintendent. How do we live so long before? But maybe that's, and I'm not asking you to do that. They don't need authorization. The people can do that on their own uh, and, you know, sit there. And I guess there's going to be a meeting on uh, uh, next Tuesday night on uh, the, the uh, middle school but anyway so i come to praise you thank you for all your work nobody pays you anything for doing this and uh, uh public services uh, as they say a good deed is its own reward so thank you um and i guess i read a lot of old bits every day i read the paper early in the morning it's delivered and it's interesting to see how things are remembered so i'm not here to bury you but i'm here to say <laughs> how will the 2022 charter commission be remembered Will it be remembered by, uh, they said, to eliminate some obsolete provisions? Well, they've been obsolete for eight years. That ain't gonna, that's not gonna sell it. That's not the sizzle on the steak, folks. Um, I agree with uh, the conclusion you reached on the voting districts, letting that person stay on, as Lyndon suggested, until the next election if they decide to move around the city but stay within the districts. Um, the, the piece that Jim handed out here, I guess it's page on the back of the title page, you've thrown in this campaign finance reform, uh, not reform, campaign finance disclosure in, and I looked at the minutes and I said, I beat this up last time pretty good, so I won't go through it. But I think that two, the last three sentences, uh, you need to have a separate question on um, people having to report their contributions and also how it's spent. And I'm on WNHN's board of directors, which is known as Arnie's radio station. Arnie had a show, I don't listen all the time, but I caught a piece and she was talking about schools and how the conservatives and some of the charter school advocates are really pushing, but she said if you don't have that, and I think Tracy spoke about this earlier on, you need that campaign finance disclosure, uh, that when those checks start coming in from out of state or from out of the district to candidates and they're not telling you, why, why are they coming in? 
So I'm sitting here saying, you want to be a hero, don't give that to the school board to do, because it'll take them six months to a year. They got you all, a lot of you have been on the board. Do it now, that's question number one. You want to be a hero, you want to be remembered. You know, last time the, the Charter Commission is remembered from disengaging itself from having to go to the legislature and do some things. That's how that one's remembered. But I mean, to the extent that you, um, we're gonna vote out obsolete references, they're already obsolete. I mean, has anybody looked at the 2012 interchange of how we're gonna elect people? Nobody's looked at those recently. They know they're obsolete. Uh, stipend, you've heard my opinion on that. I gave you a number and you want to pass the, pass the buck or don't want to pass the buck to them. <laughs> let, let them decide what to do. Um, the question four, the treasurer and the clerk, other than Bill and Bill, I've heard nobody speak about why the people of Concord should not be allowed to elect a clerk or a treasurer like every other school district. Well, don't the, leave early tonight. Well, I I'll, may stay and watch or I may watch <laughs> it later. But anyway, and then um, the other one is, um, in a big overview, the fifth, on the next page, I guess, well, before I get there, look at um, the amendment procedure, the uh, campaign finance procedure. If you look at the current charter, page 8 of 14, it's uh, section 20C. It basically says the <coughs> Charter Commission has to follow these campaign disclosure, finance, and contribution and expenditures things. You could take that part, you could take that language there. It was good enough for 10 years ago. Take that language right out and put that out there as a question. That's question number one. You want to sell this, you want to sell it, you did some good you things? You made your point. Yeah. You get number one. All right. Can you give me the section again? It's, uh, it's on page eight. It's section 20, and it's this uh, first full paragraph, C, 20C. Each candidate shall be required to file reports, and you all did this, or you didn't spend any money, you didn't, didn't take any contributions in. But basically it says, and I, and I think that's, that's important. Um, the other one is, and I've, my eyes kind of glazed over when you started talking about 49B and all those, and I told you my prior experience, but um, taking out what's in there is incredibly complicated, but it was workable. Nobody tried to use it, whether it was because it was too complicated or because it, it didn't. But, you, but you're going the wrong direction. Ten years ago, you said, get away from the state. We don't need the state legislature to tell us what to do. And now we're going to go back and say, but we're going to adopt this 49B law. And if they change the law, it's going to do that. Why are we going back? Leave it the way it is. Why, why are we going back? We're backtracking. Amend and update, clarify local charter amendment and revisions, and I guess, the, the, I didn't read the whole report, we're gonna stick 49B in there. Well, isn't that what we did last time to get away from 49B, so. That's all I have to say. <laughs> okay. Any questions? Thanks, Thank, thank, thank you. you, Mr. Ross. Thank like you. you I, I read the obituaries every morning, too, and if I'm not in, I'm gonna go to work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, you're not the first to say it, not the last, thank you. Uh, next on our agenda is the approval of minutes from the last <coughs> meeting. I think you've all had a chance to see them, and uh, we need to know if there are any errors, omissions, or other corrections that should be. Uh, we ask whether it was anyone else who wanted to speak. Oh, I'm sorry. Bob, no? Oh, I cut you right off at the knee. Okay. They're okay. Oh, they're okay. <laughs> okay. I am so sorry. So um, I move approval of the minutes. Second. Okay. Well, there's, another t there's a second opportunity. Uh, so back to the approval of the minutes. Are there any errors? Uh, Bill? He moved it. I moved approval. Move, is there a second? Bill, Bill said, oh, I did it. Too. Okay. Yeah. All right, um, all those who uh, w wish to approve the minutes as written from the last meeting will say aye, please. Aye. aye. Are there any no's? No. No, there are no no's and there are no abstentions. And so, therefore, the approval of the minutes has taken place. Um, at some point tonight, or certainly by next week, I would like just to go through the formality of asking if anyone wants to revisit, reconsider, 
the motions that failed our original uh, process. And I'm guessing that because they have not come up since, that there probably will be no, we're satisfied with what we did. But I do think it would be important for us to record that we did uh, entertain a reconsideration. However, I would like to move on at this point to the commission work session and turn it over to Mr. Ottinger. And, and I think Jim Mr. is here with the Jim is here, and the, the stage is all yours. Great. <laughs> so what are we covering first, Bill? Oh, well, just to get set the stage, we've worked really hard, and we've come up with a series of amendments that we've all discussed. Last meeting, we made a few changes uh, to the proposed markup. We've been working with a document that takes the current charter and crosses language out that we want to delete and puts new language <coughs> in. We made a few comments on that. And then what happened is Jim and I got together with that information and we took the next step and Jim is going to just describe it to you what he's handing out. Our, our, our process involves getting to, as we've talked about from the beginning, a preliminary report that we're all going to vote on and it'll come next meeting and, and we're going to vote to approve the preliminary report or not. And if we vote to approve it, those who vote in favor will sign it. And then our clerk will take care of getting it with the lawyer's help. Uh, Jim O'Shaughnessy, help us get it to the three state officials for their review. Bill. Do you anticipate that we will vote on this tonight? We just got it tonight. No. 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 Uh, next, next, next meeting, yeah. Jim is here to present it uh, right. first as a walkthrough. And Jim, in your comments, would you... I want to go back to Charlie's point about not for the purpose of being a hero. I don't think anybody's going to think we're heroes or otherwise by serving on the Charter Commission, but rather how you made the decision that the residency and financial disclosure requirements are sufficiently related that they should be in one question. They all have to do with with like qualifications for office. I think that's why we, we put them in there. I don't think there was a, a, a substantial sort of analysis of that um, I think we were looking at where that language would would go in the charter and it just happens to go under the qualifications section so and we've had a conversation I've heard you have a conversation I've overheard it we've had a brief conversation about how do we split these issues up for for the ballot and I think there's some wisdom to taking out Contra separating out some of the more controversial or some of the more easy provisions from some of the more controversial provisions. Um, I think one thing Bill and I talked about today, and which you will see is deliberately. Right I didn't mean to shortcut your. your no, no. All I, all I wanted was when you when you give your presentation. Sure. Comment on why you made that decision. A absolutely, and so one thing I'll point out just on a preliminary basis is that we we did not and deliberately did not include anything in here on the ballot questions. Because I feel as though that's kind of premature. Right now we're talking about what amendments and what language changes are we going to make. Let's vote on that. Once we get over that hump, then we can talk about the final report. The final report can contain language about what the ballots are, but really how the ballots worded is a question for down the road when we're preparing for the, the election and the voting. So we've left that out of here because I thought it just confused everybody and made it a little bit more complicated than it needed to be at this stage. Um, so really quickly, this is more or less, the f you know, it's not the final version, but this is what the final version is going to be. This is what the, f the final preliminary report will look like. Um, as you'll note right at the top, this is the draft for today's public hearing. Um, tentative date of April 12th, uh, which is a week from today, that's when we uh, would expect you to take the vote. Um, there's a couple of other blanks in there uh, that you know Lyndon and and Bill and I will go through. Oh, I do. You want a copy? Excuse me. You want a copy to follow? I think we pass copies out. I have I have an extra, and there may be other extras floating around. But. Um, you know, we're going to put things in, like how many meetings, and I just want to confirm that number, and how many people spoke at the meetings, that sort of. Um, there's a couple other uh, editorial changes and just sort of proofreading that we need to go through. But if you turn to the first page, 
it starts with the ex executive summary and recommendations. And this is really meant to be just that, really a summary page. If you want a shortcut to, it's already a short document, so I'm not sure if it's necessary or not, but we did an executive summary that explains the process and summarizes the recommended charter revisions one through five. Um, again, these changes are just the changes that we're talking about, and they can be split up in any number of ways uh, still from here, and I think I think after, maybe even anticipation of next meeting, but after the preliminary report is is filed, we'll have some time to kind of work on that and, and really figure out, is this the best way to structure um, the ballot questions? But for now, we have five. It's the same five. Um, nothing's really changed. But as Mr. Russell pointed out, the first one is first because it's easiest. It may not necessarily mean it's gonna be the first question on the ballot, but amendment to eliminate obsolete references. Um, that's, we've been talking about this all along. Um, Can I stop you there for one second, Jim? When we, Bill, um, if I were asked to vote on that, I'd say, what are we talking about, right? What are the obsolete provisions that are going to be? So most of them, as I think, relate to the 2012 election? Is Correct. That, yeah. It's things that reference 2012, uh, really, and, year. and and that explain, act, the explanation that's in there yep. under that yep. says that. Yeah. Sorry, Jim. Yeah, we, we would, I'm not exactly sure how you present all of that in a ballot question. This is a, yeah. you know, oftentimes, and, and I have to look at the, the statute again, but oftentimes when you're voting on like a new charter or you're voting on articles of agreement or, or a document of that nature, the clerk has that document on file and copies are provided at the ballot box and it's online and you can make a reference to it in the question. Um, how much of that we're going to be doing, I think, is is important, but not we're not there yet. But I think it's a good point. Um, so the first question really is, and in the summary it says eliminate um, obsolete references. There's an important obsolete reference that I just actually noticed today for the first time, which is the little notation right under the title of the charter, which says, "Note the charter. This charter supersedes." The school district charter as enacted by the New Hampshire legislature. I don't think that note's actually part of your it is a charter, but that will be removed in the final version of the charter um, because it is obsolete um, at this point um, by operation of law. So the Second Amendment uh, really has uh, a couple parts, but it's it, it's uh, allow board members elected to a school voting zone to remain in office after moving out of the school voting zone until the next election, and it requires the school board to adopt a resolution um, regulating campaign contributions. You're right. When you look at it now, as we get sort of more concrete, it, it starts to feel like two really different things. So they're in the same section of the charter, but they're, I think, substantively different. So well, I think I would also want the voters to have the option to adopt one but not the other. Um, in other words, as it's currently framed, you vote that question up or down, whereas voters might rightly say, well, we couldn't care less about how people move within the district, but we really do want the school board to set financial disclosure requirements. So let's think about that as we go forward. So that we're not we're not asking people to vote up or down on two different concepts. Yep. And I have a comment too. Uh, when someone moves uh, from his or her zone, the member, uh, and eventually needs to, well, I'll use the word forfeit, uh, their seat, uh, I need, think there needs to be clarity as to whether that takes place as soon as the votes are counted in November or at the end of the uh, at the end of their, their that term. Uh, in other words, the first January uh, monthly meeting. And I think that it was done improperly before because they either didn't check the charter or misread it or it wasn't addressed. But I do think we need to clarify when it is that that person actually finishes their term. And so they could be, they could be a, a school board member and already running uh, in another zone. Uh, and people will find that hard to understand, but uh, we need to figure out when the end date is for them. Um, what, just help me understand why there's why there's confusion there. So well, the elections in November, but they don't take office until 
But that's not the way the board did it once. And therefore, I believe that it's erroneous. Yeah. In other words, uh, if I remember this correctly, and I could have a brain cramp, uh, I believe that the person who was going to fulfill um, that term uh, took over in November as soon as the votes were verified and, and continued to serve starting then and all and for the rest of that person's original term. Sorry, Betty. If you look at the language that you've got on page four now, under that amendment, I think it's very clear that what it says is would continue to serve until the next election when a new person from the original school voting zone, not sure what original zone means, I think I do, we could clarify, could be elected, <coughs> would be elected to serve for the remainder of the term, meaning that person's term ends at the, the person who's moved out of the zone, their term ends at the date of the election. Because it says, I don't think so. I, a new person would be elected to serve for the remainder of the term. All I'm asking for is clarification because I believe it was done improperly. Well, what I'm saying, Betty, yeah. I think this this is clear as to what the intent is. If, if you're thinking that you want the person to serve to the end of the term that they're in, it's not what I want. Okay. I'm reporting it's what I think was confusion. Mm -hmm. Well. So, so the, and the, it way wasn't I, Nancy. the way I think of this issue is, assume no one moves anywhere. An election is held. The person is, was not running, so that person is going to conclude. For the period from the date of the election until January 1 or when the new person is sworn in, that person who was elected but wasn't re-elected, right? The person was in the office continues to serve all the way up until his successor or her successor is sworn. I think we could fix it with a quick language thing. Yeah. And I think the solution... And that's the way it works on... Well, I understand, Bill, yeah. but, but so we, we should be clear on what we want. Right. Because the, the situation you're positing is there is a term, right? When you so And the term is for three years. The term is told the, until the meeting. It's either the... Well, I don't know this, but it's either until December 31st or it's until the next organizational meeting at which point that person no longer serves and somebody else is in that term. But as the language you've got in there now says, a, a new person would be elected to serve for the remainder of the term. That is the term of the individual who moved out of the zone. So let's decide what we want. That's okay, all. And then gotcha. once we know what we want, you can put in clear language. <coughs> yeah, that's... Uh, well, I think, I think actually Betty's correct that, um, and this happens in a lot of places where the election happens before the, the new person takes office, which is why in a lot of charters and in a lot of cities they have the canvassing of the vote and they certify the results and then following that meeting people come in and take the oath and then their term starts, but until that point all of the currently sitting elected people remain on the board and this comes up, this can get very, very contested if you have personnel issues or budget issues in play and people ran on a particular platform, we get into this and state law does, I think, provide some guidance. I think the Secretary of State's office does, but we may be able to just tweak it a little bit by, by putting one or two words in there. But right now the clause in the current amendment says to serve the remainder of the term until the next election. So if that phrase is unclear, I don't think that's what it says. I'm looking what at the charter uh, amendment that yeah, we're yeah, not. Let's, let's just let's just stop for one minute and say, what do people want? Do they want the so you you move out of the zone you got elected in? You get to serve until when? Until the next election or until the term that you were elected? Until a new person takes your seat at the end of your term. I think logistically it's easier to bring everybody on in January together because you're always going to have more than one, or you, I, I guess you're not always because you've got incumbents, but presumably you may have new people already who, if they're voting for a seat that someone completed the term, they're going to come on in January, I would imagine. You're not really filling the term, you're filling the remainder of the Yeah, so, so what actually happens, I, I believe, under the law is when a person vacates after say the first year of a three-year term that now creates a two-year term mm -hmm. so that's the new term yep. 
And so I think you can, and that's how it always works. So I think you can make it clear in here, perhaps, or it might already be clear. But you're like a lot. Of, you're a lawyer. You're, but, <laughs> so am I. But you're like a lot of clients who say, "I say, what do you want?" And I'll try to figure out how to put it in, in words, right? And I, all I'm saying is, what do people on the? I'm not sure that people on this committee. Oh, so so you would envision a process that's different than what typically happens in in the appointment of a vacant. So if that's so, it would be atypical to have a person take office immediately after the election. Right. That would be very atypical. But that just would. happened. It did happen. <clears throat> that, I don't think that we should rely on that for, okay. for, for anything, okay. to be honest. And with respect, I think that's what right, the language Right, but we don't want them to repeat the mistake. Right. Exactly. Yeah. I think Lyndon so, may have good information. What the amendment language says? Yeah. So, okay. We don't want to repeat, keep repeating the mistake because it happened once and now that's tradition. Yeah, yeah. sure. Yeah. So all I'm saying is I agree with Kate. Rule. Yeah. Let's just make sure that the language in this section, because when it says that member would continue to serve until the next election, when a new person from the original school would be elected to serve for the remainder of the term. Now, that can term I ask may you the remainder what, of the three years? What are you report. reading from right there? Pardon? What were you just four. reading from? Page four. Reading from page four. Are you reading though? That so clause page is four the same. Of for page four of this document. Wait. Okay, so the, that explanation, that is, so the language we're really talking about right now is the language we're proposing to put in the charter, and those, that explanation may not track perfectly. So we have to correct it, it in does. both I think, places. I, think I can you fix can it. read this language two different ways. Yeah. You know, and so let's just figure out a way. Now I think we know what people on this commission want. Let's just. Do you have something to add? Uh, I, I'm still confused. Um, I'm not a member of the commission, but Jim, where you're saying the person finishes the first year, then the election happens in November, and then somebody's elected to serve the remainder of the term, which is two years, but that still leaves the November election right. to January 1 undecided. And isn't the whole point of making someone give up their seat because they no longer live in the zone to make them give up their seat? Isn't that what you wanted? No, no but the question the is when. After the year. No, it's, but if you don't want them to year. fill out the remainder of their three-year term, why wouldn't you want them to leave as soon as possible after the because, election? Because the normal process is that if you resign from the board or something, someone who takes your place serves the remainder of your term, whatever period that is. So I think it's... I mean, we, it, it stated simply, we've got two choices here. Either the person leaves on the day of the election or the next day, or they serve the remainder of that year. And then the remainder of, let's mm -hmm. just say that happens mm -hmm. in their first year, they got two years left in the term, the new person fills out. That, that's um, what was unclear to me. So. Yes. Oh, I'm so glad I brought this up. Yeah, I think it's a good, it's, it's re, this is really actually tricky because the person who's running to replace the appointed person is running for a two-year term. So if you put them in office November 10th, yeah, it's, it's a two-year two plus two-month term. Mm -hmm. So it becomes really just very weird. That's why the system is kind of always the same. Yeah. And we, I agree, you could kind of, you could say until the newly elected person takes their oath of office and is qualified, and then that other person's out there in, you could do that. Uh, but I think I can come up with <laughs> for the remainder of the year, whatever we can come up with a, a okay. phrase that works. I, I hope we clarify to you what, yeah. what we want. You never fail to clarify. <laughs> we talk about it more. There are a bunch of lawyers. I know. Lawyers. I love this <laughs> stuff. I, this, yeah, no, this is the kind of lawyers. This the is people the who aren't lawyers are the ones who know what they're talking about. <laughs> But I think I know what you want, and I, okay. and I can we can keep fine tuning that, and I'll do that for the next. Because my mentor used to say, "Go see if it'll write." <laughs> yeah, yeah, go see. Exactly. exactly. Betty, I have a question on the other piece of that. Charlie made a good point. Uh, we don't. I, I, I see. We don't want to recommend to the board that they set a policy on financing. Why can't we just say? Financing is in the charter, and it has to happen. Why do we say, "Oh, let's pass this down to the board for so them to do it"? Let's just put a first thing on the ballot. Should board candidates have to give information about their fundraising? 
Can I try and answer to that? Yeah, sure. it's not a legal question. So That's a, this is a practical question. So think about the city council. Yeah. The city council has a, has a campaign finance reporting requirement, mm -hmm. but it's in an ordinance. And it's long mm -hmm. because when you get into the details remember when mr schweiker came and testified mm -hmm. he was saying i couldn't understand any of the rules like when you had to file mm -hmm. was it by five o'clock remember he went through a, those are all exactly uh caused by very bad language in the city council's mm -hmm. ordinance this to write this rule clint about when you file who you file with um, are you going to file a week before the election, a week of the election, after? Those are complicated issues. They're arguably more complicated than many things that this charter leaves to resolution. What, what has happened is there's never been, the school board has always had the power to put in place a, a campaign finance requirement for school board candidates, but they've never done it. What this change does is say, no more never done it. You are required by your charter to sit down and draft a set of good rules that make sense for our elections. And, and I think the hard thing is, if we were to start drafting those, I've done it, the state has tried to do it. Their, theirs goes on for 20 pages, and it still doesn't work. So these are not easy rules to write mm -hmm. to get your campaign finance well, how, report. How when we ran for this office, there was just a small paragraph and we followed it. Do you know what it did? What? It said, all of us who run for charter commission yeah. shall follow the city's ordinance. That's all it says. If you look in here, yeah. it doesn't draft the rules. Yeah. It refers to the city's ordinance. Oh, okay. So because included. that's a, and we could refer to the city's ordinance again, mm -hmm. but the testimony we heard, and I actually looked at the city's ordinance, it's flawed. And they should they should improve it but i think maybe what you're saying is wait which rule system do you want to refer to because or do we want to write it okay but then the next thing is separate those two yeah, yeah. and yeah, can i can i just i agree with bill but i have a different somewhat slightly different take on it which is this is a constitution it's not a piece of legislation so you set the overall framework of what of what the school board is supposed to do but you don't get into <coughs> drafting the details of how that is to be done mm -hmm. in a charter um, any more than the US Constitution gets into the details of how the federal court system is to be set up other than to say you got to have courts so that that would be the reason that I wouldn't try to get detailed about it in the charter itself but I think you can show up at a school board meeting when they're bringing this information <laughs> forward, and if you don't like it, speak up, Clint. <laughs> I'm thinking I'm going to this next school board meeting and says, guys, do this tomorrow. Well, the charter wants it, if, if, and I agree with you, I, I'd be very happy to separate it mm -hmm. um, if people wanted to, like Charlie said. Um, I think the real gap is that when we put in the charter 10 years ago, the Charter Commission candidates are going to file stuff about their expenditures and reports. Mm -hmm. That should have sent a signal to the yeah. school board, <laughs> do it. But it, it didn't. Yeah. And so now it will be a violation of the Charter if they don't do it. And I bet you our school board is going to be fantastic at this. I know they'll do it right away. <laughs> You, um, are you betting money on that? Yes, I would, so that's I, my betting. I spoke I with several members of the board and said, why don't you pass a resolution about this now? And they said we wouldn't want to step on the Charter Commission's toes. <laughs> We'd like oh, to see no, them. they're loving every minute of it. Now they're like racing. See them finish their nah. work. <laughs> yeah, it's like, nothing. It, it's like when the legislature adopts a, a statute that says the school board shall adopt a policy, you know, um, addressing whatever. In schools and they leave it to the board to do it so that's essentially what we're doing mm -hmm. but we're saying a resolution which is legislation one yeah it's legislation so I think that's the right analysis okay um, doing fine keep on all right, where am I? <laughs> all right, we're back so I think it's helpful if if, if you want to follow this with me and most of you have already done this if while you're looking at 
the summary, you also are looking at the red line charter, which starts, you know, sorry, the appendices are just all plopped in there. There's no way to do 20 of these and have them and so forth without spending a lot of time and money doing it. But if you if you grab the red line version, it's Appendix B, have your finger there while we're looking at the beginning. That way we can kind of jump between both of them. Um, number three, tell me when you're ready. I feel like I'm doing witness testimony. There's two appendices. One more time, Jim, where are you? So so there's two appendices. There's yep, three. I'm on there's B. two appendix, appendix Bs. You want the red line one. You want the red line one, which says red line in parentheses on the right-hand side. And it might be worth pointing out yeah. to people who aren't necessarily familiar with the charter that except for the changes that we're making, the charter remains as it was. Yeah, absolutely. So the three appendices in here, I guess I could have started there, is the current charter is Appendix A, and then immediately following that, a relatively short document of only 14 pages, is the clean charter, um, which is all of the proposed changes incorporated and all the red lines removed and that's much shorter one two three four it's like nine pages long followed by appendix b the red line charter which is the current charter with all the strikeouts there and those are the those are the three documents at the end um and this is what we would propose to put forward in the final preliminary report um so that whomever has an opportunity to see all three versions of of the charter so what I was suggesting is if you kind of put your finger on that while you're looking. So, uh, so I'm a little confused. Is Appendix A, what is Appendix A? Current charter. Current charter. Current charter. Current. It starts right after the and preliminary report. And then there are two report. Bs. One is red line, one is clean. In page right. six tells you what the appendix right, it appendices feels are. feels to me like it was longer. But so that's the current charter, then there's the draft clean, and then there's the draft red line. Yes. Okay. We, given that we've, I'm looking at the clock. Given that we've been through this several times, do we need to go through the red line charter tonight? No, as opposed to no. I, I will. I'll point out. Those are. We're really just hitting the, the big points. The other that we that we had talked about last meeting, and the changes that Bill and I made, and we're bringing them forward. The other, the other big change. If you look at the red line charter, and you go to. Um, Really, it's it's the sixth page, but it's section 18. You can see it on the bottom red line there. Um, this is the provision where we are adopting by reference RSA 49B, and uh, we we said provided, however, and this is the part we talked about last meeting, and it says that at least seven members of the school board shall be required either to submit. Uh, any charter amendment directed to the voters as set forth in RSA 49B and that a vote at, of at least six members of the school board shall be required to establish a charter commission for the purposes of considering that, the new... That what, that's what the statute requires? That's what we uh, agreed to. Right. Above the, the, the seven vote we, we talked about. Did we talk about the six? What? We took a vote on seven. Yeah. It, it says it under 18. We talked about seven one. for a long time. I'm just asking... Yeah. I don't remember talking about six for the purpose of starting a new charter that was oh, part of the okay, okay i got you yeah, okay. Okay. I, my my bad no 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 it's easy and to get confused to <laughs> and wait did, what about the 2000 number and number two we That's, lowered that to a thousand okay but it's still a number it still says 2000 on here there's two two numbers in there yeah so i'll explain that so okay. it's really it's so if you read through it it makes sense a written petition that a written petition of at least 20% of the number of voters casting ballots in the last regular district election or 2,000 voters, but in no case fewer than 1,000 voters. So if 20% is is less than 2,000, it has to at least be more than 1,000. And that's, it had previously said 2,000. So it's somewhere between 1,000 and 2,000 yeah. signatures. Yeah. yeah, thank you. Okay. Unless the city gets really big and, the, anyway, yeah, that's that's what we had talked about last time. Once the, everyone comes out to vote. Yep. Right, right. Right. <laughs> a lot of people. I can't imagine. Yeah. So ba basically, it's it's a thousand voters. Um, could could you comment on Charlie's comment about us going backwards? I I thought the whole. I mean, here's my, here's my understanding. 
The current charter has a process in it that we adopted off of 49B, but 49B <coughs> has changed. And the easiest way to address this without always trying to lift the 49B process into a new charter <coughs> is to make the charter subject to 49B, so that as 49B got changed, the charter would automatically change because it's compliance with state law, right? That's that's what we're doing, and then this is hopelessly confusing, but yes, except we're carving out certain things that we want to do to make anyway. a higher voting threshold for Concord for, for bigger issues because the legislature moved in the direction of making certain things easier. And my understanding is that you didn't want to make those things easier. You wanted to keep them at a higher voting threshold that's in the current So that it's clear to the audience, rather than setting out a whole procedure for amending charters that it currently in the New Hampshire statutes, 49B is a chapter of the New Hampshire statutes, we're just incorporating 49B in. So if that law changes, the charter changes because it's subject to that statute as it is amended from time to time. Yes. And, and if I could add, when we did this the last time, 10 years ago, the legislation that created that charter commission actually said that the charter commission shall consider a local amendment procedure and in fact, the debate was, well, do we have to put the whole thing in there or can we refer to the state law requirements? And the decision was around that table, let's take the current statute that existed, and this was with the attorney back then for the question, and put it all in there. The thing about Charlie's comment that I, I think was not quite on is that between the time that we did that and today, the legislature changed, in some cases, Jim, making it more stringent than ours with uh, uh, votes. They, they, uh, the legislature changed 49B, so we were now out of sync with state law. And that's how we don't want future charters to be out of sync with state law any more than in, they may get. In simple get. terms, local bodies can enact provisions that are more stringent or more protective of voters' rights than the legislature imposes, yeah. it can't adopt procedures that are less stringent than yeah. what the legislature requires. Yes. That was our understanding. That's, that's well, again, let me frame this word. Call we're, preemption. We're in the, yes, we're in the preliminary stages. Yeah. And so this is what we think is right. That is the analysis that I think is correct. Talk to other attorneys in my office. The preemption doctrine is different from state to state, but for New Hampshire, we think that was the intent of of the constitutional amendment, and we're, we we feel good about that. But we still have to go through the process of vetting this with the attorney general and the secretary of state's office. So um, I feel pretty good about that. But we're still at the beginning stages. Um, the other two uh, we've already talked about; those haven't changed, other than the thousand voter threshold, um, and, or or rather the floor of a thousand voters, and then the three fifths majority vote. Um, shall be required for the adoption of any new charter, charter revision, or charter amendment. And that's so it, the way we structure it is bo board um, voting to sort of initiate the process, petition um, of citizens to initiate the process, and then it's vote of the voters to adopt the change. That's how the three questions are sort of organized. Um, and I believe. Just checking. That's really all, all the stuff from last time. Everything else we've talked about, and there's really nothing different um, in the preliminary report. Let's go back to that document, just because you haven't, we haven't really looked at this for, since early March. You're on um, appendix A now, right? We're we're at the beginning. <coughs> this is the preliminary report, yeah. so we haven't looked at this. The summary one through five. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's short. First six pages is what we're talking about. Yes, yeah. the okay. first six pages of that's the actual preliminary report. Most of it is just, you know, summarizing how folks were elected, how many meetings we've had, what we've done so far, what our process is, where things have been posted online, just to show compliance with the notice and, and all the meeting requirements, which you guys have gone like above and beyond. You've had so many meetings and you've been very very open and transparent throughout the whole process and i like i like to be able to sort of brag about that in here um it talks about the process for filing the report 
the process after we file the report. So it's just all here. And then part two is, um, this is the meat of it, right? This is where we actually articulate what the amendment is going to be and then provide an explanation. So um, we can go through that, but it's already kind of been done now, right. like like so many times. Well, we, when, so I heard the suggestion, we started out with 20 topics that we thought, I think at least 20, that we <coughs> were going to consider and vote on. And I think it probably would be useful to list those topics and the vote taken on them as an addendum to the preliminary report. You mean the motions pass and the motions fail? Right. Yeah, well, we've got all of that. No, I know we do. Yeah. I'm just asking whether people think it should be, we should include that as part of the preliminary report. It could so be a really a short, I mean, there could be another section in the first part, which is, there's process relating to the preparation and filing of this preliminary report, I could add another paragraph or do a sub-paragraph. people on the commission want. I'm just thinking that, you know, that gives it a roadmap for what we considered and how we voted on it. Do you have good minutes on all of all of those? Yeah. yeah. No, it's it's just super paper. easy to do. We got paper like this. So are you volunteering? <laughs> no, no, no. It, it's easy. I old. haven't volunteered for any of what I've done. <laughs> I'm happy. I'm happy to do it. You guys tell me if. Oh, that, that's, that's I'm just asking whether can I, I? I agree. I like the idea that uh, that folks, you know, if someone takes the time to look at the preliminary report, uh, besides the the big three, that uh, folks have an idea of where we came from, mm -hmm. what we did. And I think it's also important to show that not every vote was unanimous, that there is a disparity Correct. of thought yeah. on this, yeah. and that there was differing opinions, that's and and point. showing that. Yeah. Um, we weren't always in agreement. So there we were 22 motions, and they split absolutely evenly. 11 did pass muster, and here are the 11 that I've referenced earlier today that didn't. And indeed, they did have differing votes, especially with those that passed. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, it would be. Would you want it as an appendix yeah. or a section? Sure. I think an appendix. Okay. Well, and I think, for, yeah, it, sh it also shows the people who are voting on this where we came from and what the thought process was going through it and sort of, if they're looking at the preliminary report, they can reach out to people and ask questions. And that, why will it's it? It's transparency. And then we should debate whether it's an appendix and it didn't an addendum or an exhibit. <laughs> or a revision. Oh, call it what you want. <laughs> Let it go. Yeah. <laughs> But what it would do is it was it would identify why it took us question. 12 meetings to get to where we hope to be next time. Because then we wonder if we just came and served coffee. You need to go. Why did they show up the first time? You should have been here all Arnie, the time. Betty, do you have a? It sounds like you have something. Do you have a kind of? Oh a, yeah. Yeah. Oh, I have this. Oh, I'm sorry. No, we have it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's what you yeah, want. Don't go there. Don't go there. Yeah, we, we, we have our votes. Yeah. We have a, a page. <coughs> motions which failed. Or motions which failed. You can have my official tally sheet. <laughs> uh, We're putting that in right. as an appendix <laughs> and an addendum. There's a couple of just sort of um, things I would need your help kidding, plugging in. Kidding, we'll, we can give you everything you need. I have a bag full of paper. Sounds exciting. <laughs> yes. Kidding aside, um, thank you to you and Bill for a lot of work. It's a really good piece of work, and you've got the, you know you've got the clean charter, the old charter, the marked up charter. I think it's I think it's very helpful. Okay, and could you give us an idea of uh, what will be remaining to do at the next meeting when we hope to? We're we're going to review the th the the three things we just talked about, right? Okay. We'll, We'll try to separate the residency and the campaign contribution as separate issues entirely. Um, we'll take a, um, a make an attempt at cleaning up that language. Um, I know other statutes I can look at, so I'll see and I'll see how the Secretary of State's. But I, and if you have thoughts, send them along. Send me an email. I do have one little nit, Jim. And on page Roman numeral two, number five, two. Which of what? Uh, the first the, right of, of the, the report. report yes. mm. Yeah, if, and if you if you see if you see typographical or editorial things, point them out because oh, wait a that's that's the next that's the final by, thing. By incorporating statutes, state by reference. Okay. Where where is this again? Good. Roman two. In number five, amendment to update and clarify local charter amendment and revision process. Yeah. Take a look at the 
second line of that sentence, by incorporating statute state by reference. I think you mean to say by incorporating the state statute by reference. I, I think it would not be inappropriate as you read through this draft over this week to, if you find things like that, like Bill just found, to email them to Jim. At, at, at his email address because he will be collecting all of this and trying to put a fishing touch on a final document to present to this next meeting. I don't think you want to give us a, a word version, Jim, or you'll get nine <laughs> word versions. Back, no. no, just no. mark mark up a hard copy and right. if that works, or even or just email me like the section, section two. Yeah. To do, that's fine, you. and then I can try to. One other little one. Like a hundred <laughs> editorializing by committee. That's All right, not go. His fault. I know. That's, uh, uh, that's my no fault. No one spells it right, so, but my <clears> name <throat> is Bill. Most of the mistakes, though, are. It's okay. Most of the mistakes are, are Bill's. Yes. And yeah. I just that's want to point true. that out. We sort of assume that. That's <laughs> always the case. I, are there any ex educators here who could mark this properly with this SPs and stuff like that? <laughs> oh. Gold stars. I've been doing that all week on senior theses. <laughs> I don't want to do it anymore. Don't she just speak too loud. <laughs> yeah. Go gently. I have a very delicate ego. Yeah. So no, just, no, no. I doubt it. Kate, okay, do you have another change? My, my name is spelled wrong. Catherine. It's, I, it's well, not I didn't ER. even look at that. Like, sorry. It's okay. Uh, yeah, I haven't even seen that. So. It's in the front. It's in the, when you list all the numbers. All right. I, I know I've asked this question yeah, before. It's, it's huh? C H H R Y N. We we'll throw our way in. So. Okay. Well, I think we the vote will happen. So, um, how do you record yourself as a as someone who's approved? Well, you tell me it may not matter for purposes of the preliminary report as opposed to the final. Report. Yeah, I don't think it does as long as we have a majority. I mean, I can I'll, I can weigh in and tell you what my vote would be, but I'm not you can you I mean you can participate in the vote electronically. You know, it's it's a public meeting, so as long as we can you know get you on the phone, put you on speaker, you can hear the question, take a vote. That's permitted under ninety one A. So. Wait, wait, where is he going to be? Not here. <laughs> He's working. <laughs> Not here. I've worked all winter. I'm going to be in Florida for four days. I don't even like Florida. <laughs> Jim, okay, no rubbing. Let's in. let's let's steal a little bit of time if you want, and have you come in uh, and to have you come in, and we can actually work with a signature that can be given to uh, you like and delivered. I don't want to, um, he won't be here for the vote. So the question is, do you want to? Participate electronically. If you do, you can. If you don't, don't be on the phone. if you don't, don't worry about okay. it. You're, you're. Yeah. Don't worry about it. Yeah, we, we can note in the record today that you support all of this, but I would focus more on the final report stage. Um, this is not exactly relevant to right now, but you you said earlier that um, we won't be writing the ballot. You know that happens later. Who who does that? Uh, Do we convene again? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. I, I, <laughs> think. I just didn't know. I didn't know that we were done. Yeah, preliminary. <laughs> we were done. You're, you're never getting out of here. <laughs> I think, and we can talk about that process, and I definitely want to hear what you know you all think, but I think you should weigh in and decide how those ballot questions are going to be presented, yeah. and and then. And the order. And, and the order and all that, right? In some, some well, fashion, just like this. More important than that, given made earlier tonight. We're going to have public hearings. We can't well, just <laughs> not meet again after the public hearing. We have to consider the statements that people have made that inform us as to you know, how yeah. the public reacts to it. So. And that pretty much leads us into, are you uh, all set, mm -hmm. Jim? I just want to follow on Nancy's question. If, if I, you know, and I've asked this question before, but I'm looking down the road so that I walk into the voting booth and I have my ballot, and we may have five and we may have six questions, and they're going to be brief, very, as, as detailed as we can make it in one sentence, but then somehow we get to the community, the detailed explanation of all these, is that how we go about this? Yep. In fact, the charter will be uh, 
the revised charter along with the current charter and probably we can provide a markup will be with the clerk patrick taylor mm -hmm. and so public member can can get that can it study it can go through the things in detail they'll have the preliminary report that there's going to be more than enough information out there but i think i think it would also be you know the idea that many 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 people will go to the clerk and get the charter oh. and i mean it's not going to yeah. happen so i guess my question is how can we get some easily accessible summary okay. i mean we can certainly ask for coverage um from the monitor and, and uh, whatever um, but how else might we be able to do that what i had envisioned and uh, bill and i have talked about it a couple of times a, a fact sheet or an explanation sheet and i would enlist the aid of the school board members uh, in the fall, be well before November 8th, to distribute those. This is one time when people can carry them home. I mean, it's nonpartisan, it's, it's just information. We can leave them around uh, the city, in the library, uh, at the nursing homes, a a anywhere, so that people, if they're interested, can look at the fact sheet and understand what it is they yeah. will be asked to weigh I in on, a good on idea. November Will a digital copy be housed on the school district's website so Absolutely. people want to yeah, read right. it? Yeah, right. Okay. So, so, so all of those avenues yeah, will but But the, do. the thing of it is, uh, we need to be careful what the fact sheet says. I mean, it has to be absolutely accurate, and it all has to be clear and, and not 15 pages long. Um, so I'm looking toward the school board as a vested party to help us distribute those, okay. but the writing of it may um, be a, a smaller group sure. that's uh, cl uh, clearly able to do it and has a background. Yep. Is that and, satisfactory? And if, Nancy, if I could add, the preliminary report that we're going to approve and sign, hopefully, is going to be one document that's very useful. The final report is different than the preliminary report because okay. we will have the input of the AG's office, right. the Secretary of State, right. and the DRA. Then that final report will be an even more concise summary as it was last time, and that's going to be on the website okay. and around too. So yeah. that's a summary in and of itself. Gotcha. I it's helpful. I'd like to just add one caveat to that, which is we're assuming, not, not irrationally, that everybody in town has access to a computer. Right. I know. Nice. Library. So, so my, well, I'd go one step further. If yeah. someone wants a copy of it, a hard copy, we should put on our on the school district webpage, et cetera. And we'll good. send you one. Yes. <coughs> call, call us and we'll send I, you I one. think your suggestion, we should mail it to everybody in town. That's expensive. Can I, oh. can I ask a question on that? I mean, the, the superintendent, office sends emails to everyone who's on the you know who has children or is a fact that mm -hmm. we get emails every day about <laughs> COVID and this and that I mean I would think maybe that's that, an opportunity that's that, a great post the school yep. the, the superintendent's office can send one saying that at the election there is a vote on the but charter without a lot of people who have no kids but that's just right. kids. That's, that's, I'm just talking about other avenues that, to get it. that's a great Avenue yep Lyndon because people don't read the paper, the printed paper, um, people go to a wide variety of social media sites. It's become a major problem to find ways to yeah. contact people. I think a mailing of a document this size would cost a minimum, I'm just guessing here, based on the last one we did years ago, $30,000. I know. Yeah. More than the election for this Charter Commission. Oh, well. and so maybe, maybe we need a better idea. So, <laughs> yes, of course, the superintendent can send out a notice to all families, staff, and even students. We can put it on the district's Facebook page for those who read yeah. that. They may not necessarily have children in the district, but not everybody subscribes to that. We can put it on next door. We can, which is a computer program. Um, and but the patch. it's a perennial problem. Here. That's right. It is a big problem. It's a perennial problem now. And if anybody has any ideas about how to get it out without putting a huge additional uh, cost. cost on the budget, 
I think that would be great. Yeah. Can we but ask Concord? A simple thing. Concord TV was showing his badge. I don't know if he's yeah. Oh, job, they would do some <laughs> Concord TV. But also, the Concord City it. Councilors, yeah. like my Ward One Councilor, <laughs> sends out an email every two weeks with everything that's going on, and I'm on his email list. It would be nice to ask the City Councilors to add the charter to there because they have a reach of voters that maybe are not school yeah. members. Those are all great right. ideas. Yeah. Yeah. That's a great idea. Remember, it's probably not comprehensive still. It's, it's No, it's but it's one more way to get way. maybe another patch of people oh, who we weren't we who we weren't about. accessing. Um, yeah. I mean, it may be cheesy, but for folks who don't literally don't have computer access, you could do um, yard signs with a phone number. For people to call and, and ask. I mean, you yeah. can go as far as you want, yeah. as long as you're not electioneering, as long as you're not taking an advocacy position. No, right. you're yes. providing neutral, factual information. Yeah. Um, but it's like a bond vote. You want to make sure that people have all of the information. They're well informed, and and yeah. they're they're going to be presented with these questions. So you want them to know what they're what they're being asked to do. Yeah. Um, are we okay? Yeah. What's what's okay. next? Uh, are, we, are we talking? Of, what are we talking about next? Uh, the, the next item on the agenda, uh, my agenda, not yours, uh, is uh, the meeting with the AG's office. And do we have a report from yes. folks? Okay. Uh, and before we go to that, thank you, thank you, thank you. This is, you know, we're, we're almost there. Yeah. I feel yeah. like so I close. need to stretch and, and, and pass the tape. Yeah, this is like, I always say this is like the part if you've ever like done pottery where you're like almost done and you're trying to get it into the kiln. And you're oh, like, yeah. Please don't, don't drop, drop it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank um, so we're we're finishing the pot and it's almost ready to get put in the kiln. Okay, um, so the remainder of the evening will be the report that we've been uh, waiting for from uh, the <laughs> visit to the AG's office. Yeah, who, wants, who wants to okay. take Trumpet this? Trumpet call. Um, and we have a very brief uh public hearing at the end yep. and people have a chance to speak again and then we'll wrap up so folks so just by way of summary i and i don't know how much detail really to go into but by way of summary we met with um the attorney general's office and a representative from the secretary of state's office i believe that was i mean there was someone there who was familiar with state election law and it was uh, bill bill and i met and um it's a great meeting. We we had a conversation about our process and what our goals are. We had a um, we, I did a presentation on the different types of school districts that exist in New Hampshire. We talked about that a little bit, and and I think it's maybe important to just do a quick summary so that everybody understands that when they talk about Concord really being a unique form of government, it's it like I I can't stress that enough. Um, Really, there are annual meeting forms of school districts in New Hampshire, and then there are um, uh, then there are city school districts in New Hampshire, and there are some kind of unique hybrids like Kearsarge, and there are some annual um, school districts that have an SB2 form of government. But really, there's those two: there's annual meeting and there's cities, and then there's Concord. <laughs> Concord is the only uh, so historically the way I would think about it, and the easiest way to explain it is that you were chartered by the legislature for a hundred plus years, well over a century, um, century and a half, the legislature w chartered you, created you, formed you, chartered you. And then in 2010, they passed legislation um, in a session law uh, amending RSA 49B to add section 14 to specifically allow Concord to, 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 have, to adopt its own charter under, under 49B. It's important to know that no other school district is has the legal authority to have its own charter under 49B. You're special. So, um, and your charter was, I think, when you first went through that process, it was basically you're just trying to adopt um, and, and, and um, codify or document or memorialize how things had been for however long. And that's what your first charter is. It's really how Concord existed prior when it was a, a creature of the legislature and how it is now under um, your own unique home rule. So there's a lot of history. We went through the history of the Concord School District um, because we wanted to point out that since 1961, um, the school district has not had an annual meeting, um, that the elected board members really were the, um, the sole legislative body for the school district. And that's where that unique authority comes from. Um, 
So we went through that history, and I think it's important to, to highlight that history. And I think we made our point um, at the Attorney General's office that because of our history, uh, Concord School District is not like any other school district in terms of not only its budget process, which we always talk about, oh, you guys have your own budget, but it's really unique in terms of the election process. Um, RSA 197, which governs school district elections, is a statute that says this, um, this statute governs the election of school district officials in an annual meeting form of government. So that is right off the bat, it's different for a lot of reasons, but it's different because you elect your school board members differently. You do not have an annual meeting form of government. So the, the position I took and I tried to explain to the AG's office is that 197, which is the provision that says all other district officers are elected at the annual meeting, that whole statutory scheme doesn't apply to school districts really at all. Um, the Attorney General's uh, asked the Attorney General's office asked me to provide a list of the statutes in 197 that did not apply to um, to Concord, and I'm 99% of the way done. Well, I was actually able to look at 197 and say on the spot, none of them do, because really none of them do when you look through it. Um, RSA 671 is also the school district um, election statute, and, and there's a bunch of the provisions in that statute clearly apply to the election of um, a school district officials at town meetings and school district annual meetings. So again, that whole scheme, um, when it was adopted in 1979, it's just obvious that they weren't thinking about Concord because although you're a school district, you really are more like a city now, um, a standalone municipal corporation like a city than anything else comparable in New Hampshire. Um, uh, so we went through that. We talked about some of the other uh, provisions of the statutes that I've already sort of covered more generally. Um, uh, one of the big points to make is, and these are sort of unique uh, legal issues, is that the, the state election laws refer to a school district as being con uh, contig contiguous with the town. One thing that also makes Concord unique, and probably why the legislature chartered Concord, is that when it unified Concord way back in the 1800s and the early 1900s, it, it annexed um, a whole part of the city, which is part of Merrimack Valley. So the, fa the fact that Penacook is not part of the Concord School District makes Concord unique as well, because you're a school district that's not even comprised of all of the geographic um, territory of Concord, which is really kind of strange and unique, but it just is the way it is. Um, you don't elect your officials on the second Tuesday in March. You're, re you're elected um, at regular November election days. That makes it very difficult to fit Concord into that same peg with other school districts. And to the extent state law, um, you know, the AG is concerned that we're trying to sort of, you know, create a new pathway here and do something that's so unique that it would not fit in anywhere else. I think it's important to know that um, a lot of charters um, for school district charters and other charters provide for the appointment of school district clerks and treasurers. Um, all city clerks and all city treasurers in New Hampshire um, must be appointed uh, per 49C20. So there's no city in New Hampshire that has an elected clerk and an elected treasurer. That that was that's one like, of the most simple things about this. Yeah, is that for you know decades the city school district appointed its clerk and its treasurer just like cities and then 10 years ago that flipped a switch under a tight time frame where all of a sudden for some reason concord was suggested that we had to elect a treasurer and a clerk what we're trying to do is get back to the reality that we're a city yeah, not a not a town. More yeah, it's really like and, Concord and, has two cities. You have the city of yeah. Concord, and then you have the school district. I, I that's how I think of it in my and, mind. And so the city of Concord itself yeah. does not elect a treasurer or a clerk. No, they can't. So they no can't cities can elect. Law. Yeah, you can't by state law. <laughs> and and I know I've mentioned this before, but cooperative school districts or regional school districts, which are you know multiple towns forming one new municipal, municipal corporation school district. Um, they also, by law, have to appoint 
their clerk and treasurers, and that's RSA 195.5. So I, I often get asked that question. Um, so it's our, it's really our position that given the history and the inapplicability of all these other laws and the fact that there's other laws that provide for the appointment of, of clerks and treasurers, this is not a preemption issue. I, I hope the state will agree to uh, with us that this is not a violation of state law for us to amend our charter this way. Um, but, and therefore that amendment yeah, will go I, as stated. Yeah, so we're going to submit it as part of our preliminary report. We're going to submit our preliminary report to them. They have 45 days to review and get back to us. So there will be, um, I, I suspect, some follow-up conversations. I'll share my list. I'll have conversations with them and see, and Bill and Bill, and, and see if we can't um, keep kind of persuading them to see Remind this. them what yeah, you just, said. Yeah, just to come up, um, because we are a unique animal, there isn't going to be a perfectly clear answer to this. So it really depends on what the Secretary of State and the Attorney General want to do. If um, you can justify this either way, we have a much stronger argument, but it's not there Done is, yet. There is not a clear answer here. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's because, like with so many other things, the legislature made a hash of it. Um, <laughs> so, um, I think it, I agree, and I think at the end of the day, where we might be able to hang our hat is if there's no clear um, statutory scheme covering Concord, then it's not a preemption issue. Well, but let me just, I, I agree, Jim, but. What was the first question do you think that the attorney general, that the assistant attorney general asked? It was, well, if this is what you want to do, why don't you go to the legislature and get them to pass a statute? Oh. So, I mean, that's, you know, that's, that, the, if, yeah. if they that's want to That's how we got in this place in the first place, was going well, to the legislature. If you're looking mm -hmm. for the easy answer, that, that could be the easy answer for them. It's not the easy answer for us. No. So. Yeah, I think the easy answer is, 49B was the legislature's authorization for Concord to do this. Absolutely. So that's, I mean, that's the simple answer. So the question I have is, we're still at a point where we, we don't know whether this goes to the voters or not. We don't. We still have to wait for that preliminary report. Reaction. Yeah, if I were to draw this on a timeline where we are, like I still, as much as you guys have done all this work, like you're at the midway point now where well, you're starting to sort of what you want to do is going to be done like that's crystallized <laughs> and the next is how you move forward so you're sort of at the midway point that doesn't mean you have that much more work to do but in terms of the process you do there's still some some steps that we have to go through um, hopefully it's smooth sailing but we will have to wait and see well this has been out there for well ever since November uh, was one of the issues that was a mm -hmm. hangover from uh, well, that's a bad word, uh, was hanging on from uh, another time and uh, needed resolution. So we thank you for visiting with them, uh, giving them your best argumentation, your most information. Lyndon. Uh, I'm sorry, just before you go into community input again, do you need to schedule another meeting in May or another meeting after these three public hearings? And I say that because they pointed out we need another meeting to consider what people have brought at the public hearings, but also in consideration of people's schedules. Do you want to schedule anything or not? Well, I have my uh, calendar right up here, and uh, if we have this right, uh, next week we've already outlined what's going to happen on the 12th, and then uh, we get into the, the report, get signed, goes to the clerk, goes to the three officials. Uh, and then we have a May 10 meeting, which has already been uh, posted for a public hearing. And that had to be within 30 days after the submission of the uh, preliminary report. Um, well, we, we need to have the notice back from them. And of course, we don't know exactly when we'll have their response. Uh, are you saying we should schedule something uh, just to make sure we have it on and then we can cancel it. I'm, I'm not in favor of another public hearing after May 10th. That's three. I'm and not saying public hearing, I'm saying the meeting. A I meeting. don't know whether you need it or not, but. Anybody want to speak to that? My suggestion would be on that one, that we meet after the public hearing on that day. 
Well, that and design. We'll have had three time. meetings, um, and we'll have had plenty of chance yeah. to absorb. I agree. Um, and then we just meet afterwards and, and decide what we're going to do. Okay. With that. And then there will be a, another meeting to consider the final report. Right. Thing, but that will be scheduled later. Okay. Well, thank you. That is a job well done, a job that's been hanging around, and now we have a normal bill go on memorial Not yet. No. Wait, no, we have a public hearing. Public we, have to, we have to officially, yeah. yeah. No, just take it back. You're not going home. I'll, I'll make it later. I can't even. No, we'll you save that. She's okay. asking you. Do you want me to stay? Yeah. No, I, no, do you want him to stay? No, I don't care. So no, I, 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 I thank you. I agree. Jim, I agree. great job. Thank Thanks, you. Jim. Thanks, Jeff. Thanks, everybody. Thank you very much, Jim. <clears throat> uh, we were officially noticed as a public hearing, and I will say that a public hearing on the status of the preliminary report uh, will be the topic. Uh, all the folks in the room have been here from the beginning, and therefore you will have heard a lively discussion of the items that have been brought up to date. Uh, and therefore, I would invite any or all of you to uh, come and speak to us uh, for a second occasion. Mr. Chanella. <coughs> Thank you. Um, normally, I don't comment in meetings. I try really hard not to. It's, it can be very difficult sometimes. Um, unlike Charlie, who falls asleep to your meetings, I get the ping on YouTube, so I've been following along at home. <laughs> and I want to thank you for all of your hard work. Um, you've de put a lot of work into this. Um, I have just like two quick questions. Um, and, and maybe uh, I have missed it along the way, but um, so if each, each amendment is going to be voted on, um, who created the school voting zone name? Oh. <laughs> oh. I, I, I understand why you're changing it, but so if I'm to understand, um, uh, let's see, okay, so Dancy's in Ward 5, 6, 7, you would be District B, so that will now be called School Voting Zone B? Yes. Okay. And the reason that it has is we have tried to make it very clear that the entire district is capital D district. Right. And to have a capital D district and a small district it's was No, confusing. it can be confusing. So, so we went to Zone Ward, and I personally hyphenated it, Zone hyphen Ward. As a uh, so. as the three or four wards that are in a particular zone, I think school voting zone is a little on the long side, but I get the point. Um, uh, well, good. Uh, yep. <laughs> um, we beat the hell out of the no, source. no. I know, and it's, oh, we it's, have. <laughs> yeah, um, we've beaten the hell out of it. I think you should include district clerk and school district treasurer as report as candidates that have to report their financing in case this uh, this question is defeated. Um, the oh, you uh, yes, you know it's always been the same. You know Roger's been there forever. You know no one ever runs for it. I'm I doubt Patrick spent any money on his campaign. But just as a you know just as a That's housekeeping a yeah. order. How do you do that though in a charter where? You know, you could have a ballot question that said, if you don't vote for question A. So every no, town, yeah, every yeah, SB yeah, town has this has default rules. budgets. And and we, and we won't have that because we'll know you'll by know the final before. report okay. yeah. whether we can okay. go yeah, forward right. or okay. not. Okay. okay. No, so, but, and if you, but I think what Bill's also saying is one question could pass and the other could fail. Right. So it would just be any elected official any needs elected to do a campaign. Right. Any elected, we'll any school district right. to elect I just think it's CYA. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. That's a good point. And uh, there was one other thing, which is, um, uh, and of course they didn't write it down right. Add treasurer, yeah, district, okay. Um, the, uh, I think that that was, I think that, that there was something else, but I'm obviously not remembering, so. <laughs> That's okay. Anyway. You're getting older. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Okay. Oh, oh, did you want to sign our? Oh, sure. Yeah, I'll please. Sign I'll sign it. And uh, yes, please. Just Come to the table. table. You're already s signed in. Yes, I am. <laughs> um, Linda Mead. Um, what she mentioned about how to um, notify voters and residents online is a good idea as well as um, 
because to be honest, how many people really buy papers these days, newspapers? Mm. Nobody. I never read the Concord <laughs> Monitor. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I know. And people like the obituary. <laughs> That's right. right. I knew someone at work that used to always read those. Well, um, I have to check but, to make sure I'm not in it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. So, but you made some good suggestions. Um, you brought that up, and I, I did. I'd like yeah. to support that. Thank you. Um, the patch is also something yep, that a lot absolutely. of people read, and I got to tell you, I started reading it, and I love people's comments. I get a lot of information about the city from that, so I think that would be great too. Um, just notifying people ahead of time, you know, giving them time so that they can read through what's coming up before they go to the meetings or attend meetings and where to find the information. Well, because it is the tedious. Task will be There's so many committees and things and you try to follow it. The task will be to have a very uh, uh, vanilla but clear explanation uh -huh. of what it means and uh, and we'll be work carefully to make sure that that's done yeah. uh, correctly. Right. Uh, and as I say, you know, uh, to, uh, take them to the library, take them to uh, Good Life programs and events. There are lots of places mm -hmm. where you can put paper out and people will say, oh, this, uh, this yeah. is good, now I'll understand it. As long as there's a big sign going at the library, because you know, you get in there and you're looking for your books and all. So, well, and some people don't have computers, and yeah. I get that, um, but you, you know, you got to think creatively. How do people? Where, where do people get their information? Well, and how do you want to reach them in time so that they have time to read, so they're yeah. prepared when they come? So you heard the brainstorming to. here. Exactly. And we'll do all of that, and, and I love it. Okay, good. Okay. Thank you very much. I Thanks appreciate so all your time tonight. Thank you. Mr. Yeah. No. Are there any other comments from the folks? Uh, on the public it's hearings time. part. Goes up. Yeah. I move to adjourn. <laughs> move to adjourn. I will second that. Oh, you are already to adjourn, and you have. I mean, you. <laughs> <laughs> I am. And you I have. have. He's you adjourned. Made that and Eric is adjourned. I'm jumping right in. We have a we have a motion, and we have a second from Eric. Thank you very much, Eric. Uh, those in favor of adjourning this very lively meeting will say aye, please. Aye. 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 Are there any nays? I can't imagine it. Uh, we are adjourned. <laughs> Good job.